Whatever you're doing is wrong. And it's quite possible that whatever you do will end up feeling wrong. Well, so some of the voices, the more negative voices in your head may have you believe. My name's Anthony Samroff. I wrote the book Procrastination and Annihilation, which you can get for free from beyourselfandloveit.com forward slash do it. And I want to talk to you about self-criticism, chronic self-criticism. Where is it comes from? And is there anything you can do to improve, to help, to become less self-critical and more positive in your dealings with yourself? So there are a couple of perceptions, or I want to talk about two ways that we internalize negative perceptions about ourselves when we're growing up. The one is, I think in this society, we don't get a lot of quality attention as children. Um, the parents are busy, the teachers, well, you've got one teacher between 20, 30 kids, sometimes more than that. And what children, children really spell love, T-I-M-E. It's very possible that people don't take what you have to say seriously when you're a child, don't listen to you, don't ask you about your interests. If you're watching TV, you might get ticked off for that, or if you're playing the computer, rather than come someone coming over and saying, hey, what are you watching? What do you like about it? What, um, why is that interesting to you? Okay, and if people did treat you that way, you might spend a lot less time uh, doing things like watching TV and playing video games or other things on your own and a lot more time spending with good influences, good parents, right? We don't get much of that in this day and age, if we ever did. So what I would say, the main perceptions that you receive from that is that you're really not that much good or worth paying that much attention to. And the second one, this is the more important insight of the two, um, we get ticked off quite a lot as children uh, and when you tell someone off, what you are saying to them is essentially you're not meeting a standard that you're capable of meeting. I mean, we don't tell off a midget for not being able to make a slam dunk, do we? So uh, the, the, the underlying theme of is you're a bad person, you're bad because you're not doing something that you're capable of doing and should be doing. Now, sometimes you might not be capable of doing it. Uh, maybe you are rubbish at maths and your parents are giving you uh, into trouble for your bad math homework. Um, may maybe they should be helping you, uh, helping teach you, learning it themselves and teaching you. But then that comes back to not spending enough quality time with kids. But the in general... I mean, it's not really that, I could go on massive tangents here and I probably will because it is my style. It's not usually necessary to tick off kids. Like you can actually explain to them what, um, why you think they should be doing differently. You can help them do differently. You can uh, tell them how you feel if you're not enjoying something. You can say, yeah, I'm bored of this game. Can we do something else? Or um, I'm really trying to concentrate on driving. So could you guys keep it down, please? And kids tend to be very keen to please. So um, those are the, if that is how we were treated, that is how we would learn to treat ourselves is, I guess, the fundamental point. Now, when you receive this message, you're bad because you're not conforming to a standard that you're capable of, you internalize the feeling that you could be doing better than you're doing or you're, you're doing something wrong. And what happens is the mind looks for evidence to justify whatever we feel. And if you feel like you're not doing enough or you're not doing the right thing, you'll find plenty of evidence to back that up. Maybe the room's tidy, maybe you've got unfinished projects. And so you begin trying to flay yourself to death, to criticize yourself into doing the things that you think that you should be doing. Um, so this is, this is the thing. The emotion comes first and the analysis of why the justification for that emotion comes second. The mind follows the emotions. So um, things can always be better. So what you, and that's fine, that's a good perception. It's good to be able to look around your room and say that it needs tidying up, as uh, Jordan Peterson will attest. 
it's also uh, good to be aware of the fact that you might have some unfinished projects that are important to you. The problem with fleeing yourself to death is they take on an aura of resistance, of authority. It seems really hard. Anything seems vague. You might feel in a rush. And these negative emotions actually stop you from doing the things that you think you should be doing. So the goal is not to get rid of critical feedback from your own minds. Not at all. What we want to do is translate those voices from self-criticism into helpful advice or even coaching. So there's a number of ways that I want to talk to you about ways that you can do that. One is to deliberately practice thinking what the voices in your head are saying very slowly. So you can just, whatever ways that you're criticizing yourself or telling yourself are wrong, start to slow down your internal monologue so you can have a look at what you're actually thinking. Another way of externalizing it is to write it down. But I would say, I think the best way to do this is to actually start speaking out loud. If you're, you know, hopefully no one will start thinking you're crazy. Hear what your critical voice has to say and debate with it. So you can say, well, you've not done anything around here for the last two weeks, it's ridiculous. And you say, yeah, that's true, but I've been a bit stressed over work and I've also been feeling really down and it's really hard to motivate myself to do this when I'm feeling down. And the critical voice will go, well, you should this, well, you should that. Allow it to speak through you. And you will find by the process of speaking to yourself nice and slowly and being reasonable, the character of the voices that come out your head will improve and improve. So don't take my word for it. You can practice this yourself. Uh, other things are, you know, writing letters to yourself. Here's the stuff I want to do. Um, how do you feel about that? Why haven't I been doing it? Face yourself. Find out what's going on for yourself emotionally. Get clarity. The main reason why people don't do things is because they don't have clarity. And it's very it tightly packed. So you think, oh, I need to write that email. But there's actually two things that need to go on there. First, you need to make a decision over what you're going to tell the, that person. And then you need to write the email and then and so forth. There's several things in there, but you've got it packed tight. Now, when you think through things slowly and actually go, what will this actually entail? You create a little bit of a looseness in the structure of your thinking and your approach to doing whatever it is you've been avoiding. And you can learn to be a better friend and a better coach to yourself, to motivate yourself to do the things that you want to do. Now, a couple of things before I go. One is, please download my free book, Procrastination Annihilation, from beyourselfandloveit.com forward slash do it. And another thing is, I have a whole personal development course that I spent eight months putting together. It's truly it will change you. It will help you change yourself. It will help you become a better version of yourself. I it's not um, a low price product, but it's definitely worth it. And if you think that that's something that would be of appealing to you, I'm happy to chuck a free coaching session. And along with that, if you, let's say, take me up on this offer over the next week, so uh, by, let's say, October the 5th. Um, so you send me a little message on Facebook saying, Anthony, I'm interested in your course, Anthony Samaroff, and we'll have a little bit of chat about it and find out if the course is suitable for you. And if, if, you, if you commit to buy it, then I'll throw in a free coaching session. So thank you very much. I'd like to make more of these videos. Please share it on your wall. If lots of people see it, then that's encouraging feedback for me. And I know that I should put more of these out.